concludes our service. <laughs> Uh, what else is there? So get a sense of living from this. And what's the implication of this? So if this is true, what's the implications to you? If this is true, how would this change the way you relate to things. And what would happen to this? If this was the, f yes, I love that graphic. One of you went, whoo! Like a dissipation, even a blow up of that, a blow up of the mind, a blow, blow up, a, to m blow the mind that says, okay, the framework I was looking through prior to this day in December of 2018 had a very narrow view of what's okay and what's not okay. What is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong, that was all made up by who? This is good news. Because then if I can just crack that open a little bit, just blow that up just a hair to expand that worldview, to expand the perspective, to increase that spectrum, that, that, that frame of knowing that was false, by the way. Lead us not into the temptation of false ideas. False notion, error thinking. Lead us not into the temptation of that, but into this, a broader spectrum, a broader view. And then to practice keeping a well, well developed perspective that's much broader than that. So then if then my new worldview starting today, this afternoon, and you'll get a chance to practice before you leave the building, when someone crosses you, or they won't have the cookies that suit you on the back. And the coffee won't be the right flavor or the right temperature. You may not know where the car's parked. So we'll get some chances to practice. Well, hey, wait a minute. I'm going to relate to this differently. Instead of being upset, frustrated, mad, at what is, what is out there, I'm going to adjust where I can. My own framework. That says then if I broaden just a hair, hair, if I broaden with a crowbar to like get in there and say, hey, this angst I'm experiencing is an option. So that if I relate to this differently, then I'm going to have less angst. I don't have to love it. Ain't that good news? Turn to somebody and say, you know, I don't have to love it. Tell them, I do not have to love it. I do not have to love it. This is good news. Hallelujah. It's a holy day. I do not have to love this. Now turn back and say, you know what? You know what else? You know what else? You know what else? I don't even have to like it. I don't even have to like this. I do not have to like this. Isn't that freeing? So then if I don't have to love it and I don't have to like it, what's left? All together? Acceptance, have you heard it? Acceptance is the answer to all of my problems. I don't have to love it, don't have to like it, and I don't have to be at war with it either. I don't have to be a victim to this either. Now, folks, 
I don't know if I'll ever love it. I can promise you I do not. I don't like it most of the time either. But I'm rarely a victim of it. And there is a liberation there. A freedom there that is unspeakable. And that is available. That's doable. So I may not can like it. I may not can love it. But, but here, right here in this middle... There's real potential there, real possibility there. It says, when I operate from that center, when I operate not trying to like it, not trying to love it, but not at war with it, then there's a different me that's going to present. There's a different spirit that's going to shine through. There's a different way of being that's going to demonstrate, which is truer to my nature truer to the what is um, real about me the part that's infinite and eternal in that so get a sense of this now because when you go home and start practicing this you know the people that you live with will think you're on a new medication (laughs) because they're not gonna they're like hello what happened to church today oh it's the Christmas spirit It is, 365. The Christmas spirit expanded. The Christmas spirit taken out of just a few days here at Christmas. It would seem as important as I was preparing for this day today too to to bring out the reality that not everybody is happy at Christmas. Have you noticed? And what's it like when you're trying to make yourself happy? And you can't be. What's that like? Exhausting. And then what happens when I get exhausted? More frustrated. It ain't pretty. So then it's very, very critical to, it, to make it okay to make room for all of our humanness here in this time. It's called the dark time, if you know. A time of light and a time of dark. The darkest days of the year. Times of high stress. Times of more um, cyclical things here. Times of deeper grief. Of reflecting. Blue days, if you will. So what would it be like if we understood that? If we can be the ones that says, we're going to make room for some blue. We're going to make room for our humanness. We're going to make room for it may not be joy, joy, joy all the time. It may not be joy, joy, joy in every situation. And if I can make some room for the other, the other polarity of that, I'm going to have more joy if I'm not at war or trying to fake it, pretend like I'm doing fine, 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 when I'm not doing fine, when I could use a hug or a little rest or a little quiet or a little prayer or a hair of support, a listening ear, an understanding listener, maybe. So imagine then receiving that for yourself today, that you give yourself your own permission slip says, I have full permission to have the full human spectrum. To have times of deep joy and times of deep sadness. And times of confidence and times of doubt. And times of moving ahead. And times of sit real still. And to take ourselves out of the pressure vice that we unintentionally put ourselves in sometimes to loosen up that pressure system from us and what it would be like to take that off and then as we meet human beings being human beings if we have integrated the whole of us the alpha and the omega of us, unity's basic teaching. Alpha and omega. It doesn't say 
when you're joy, you're of God. So when I'm with joy, I'm with God. And when I am in pain, where am I? As God, with God. So God's not moving, not missing. And then in my humanness, I'm up and down on the spectrum. And sometimes here, and sometimes here. And to the degree that I make room for it all, to the degree that I integrate that, then I'm going to be less stressed, less frustrated, less guilty, less ashamed than when I'm denying this aspect or shooting about it or wanting it to be different. I want peace. I want peace. I want peace. I want peace. Keith has peace. I want Keith's peace. It would be no different than saying I want Keith's nose. Keith got the only nose there is for him. So then I can't have his nose or his peace. That's his business. However, I'm not going to have any peace if I'm seeking peace. If I'm seeking peace, wanting peace, demanding peace, should have peace, should have peace. It's like there's no peace there. So what if you stopped searching for peace? What would that be like? This is the miracle of the season. If you stop searching for peace, what would you have? Peace. You're welcome. <laughs> so can we do that? Today, is that possible? It's not lofty to say, hey, instead of search, 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 seek, 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 want, 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 demand, demand, should, should, should. It's like, make room for it all. So I'm in the business of holy days. So holy days then can be far more everything's holy now if I make room for it all. You may as well. Because it's all going to come. Some of you have already been around the mulberry bush a time or two, huh? So is it going to come? It will. And I'm going to be better prepared for it if I'm making room for what comes. Then I'm going to be more likely to be the light unto the world. A light unto the world. You have something to say, honey? She told me coming in, this is my great niece, Helen. You want to come up? She told me, um, Aunt Marmar, Marmar, I want to go to work with you. I want to go to church with you. And I'll need a microphone, she said. <laughs> and she said, I said, what do you need a microphone for? And she said, I have some things to say. So you have anything to say this morning? You don't know? You want to do a little song for us? Hmm? How about a smile? No? <laughs> Get my wave. Wave, wave, wave. So our favorite song is this. Some of you can sing along. I open my eyes to you. I open my eyes to you. I open my heart to you. And together, we raise our hearts to the sun. And together, we're opening our loving hearts as one. You want to sing with me? Sarah's my other great niece. Ready? Ready? I open my eyes to you. I open my heart to you. Together we raise our hearts to the sun. And together we are opening 
our loving hearts as one. Thank you. <laughs> so be the light to the world because it's easier. When in doubt, let it shine. When you need an answer, let it shine. Make room for all of your humanness. And to the degree that you can make room for the humanness in you, you can make room for the humanness in us. Less stress, more possibilities. And as you said earlier, we'll be a lot happier, having a lot more fun than we did before. It's an honor for me to be here. I, as Elaine said, I'm here to serve those who serve. So I don't take it for granted that it's you. And I consider it a high divine appointment and a gift to me to serve you in some way. And I'm served by serving you. So, <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. <laughs>